My name is Ryan Sokash, and I like to call myself an American Gypsy. I've been living in many different cities in my life, and after a very crazy, turbulent time, I landed here in Poland, and today I live and work as an artist, journalist, and teacher. Poland wasn't really a choice. Um, I'm an intuitive person, and since the time that I was about 23, I've just been listening to intuition, not logic. So basically, I visited Poland for the first time when I was 18, and I fell in love with the culture, the people, the language even. And as time went on, I came here more and more and more. And uh, when I was 23, I bought an airplane ticket to spend three months in Poland, and uh, I couldn't I couldn't return. So it would be a little bit of a lie to say that I chose Poland. I feel that life chose Poland, and maybe romantically speaking, Poland chose me. Probably the most surprising thing to me in Poland was my impression of sensitivity in the people. Um, maybe it's a silly example, but when I came here the first time in 2000, I took a bus from Novitarg to Surmoce Nizhna, which is a very little village in the south of Poland. And I had no place to stay. I had no idea how to say anything in Polish, and I didn't have much money. And to my amazement, people in that village took me into their house, fed me, gave me uh, coffee. I don't drink coffee, but you know, <laughs> they gave it to me, so I drank it, and took care of me. And in my country, in the United States, it's impossible for me to imagine that I could go to a small town and be taken into the home of a stranger, fed, you know, and given a bed, comfort, and security. So I think the humanity in Polish people is what really surprised me if I compare it to the life that I knew in America. I thought a lot about this question and I hate answering that question because until this moment, even through the seven years that I've been here, despite the fact that today I'm a Polish citizen, I'm still a guest in this country. And the best way I can answer your question is I dislike the fact that I don't ever believe Polish people will give me the chance to truly be a part of this country. Anytime that I have a criticism or a disagreement with someone's idea, the conversation always ends in one way. To jest Polska, a ty musisz zaakceptować. And that's it. So, you know, it can be something as simple as once I was in a sauna and a man brought a very little baby into a very hot sauna. Now, anyone should know that that's a dangerous scenario. And I very politely told the man that, you know, it's so unsafe to have the baby in the sauna. Maybe you could consider taking the baby out. And he says, Kim jesteś? Skąd jesteś? To jest Polska. And, and that was the end of the discussion. And, you know, that's just a light scenario. If I tell people that I don't drink alcohol, which is a fact, I get the same response. This is Poland. This is our tradition. You're a guest. You need to leave if you don't like it. And living here through all these years, it's become difficult because I am a critical person and I do love this country and I work in this country and pay taxes in this country and I'm a citizen of this country. So it would be beautiful if someday I could have um, value to my opinion by the Polish people. Being an artist in Poland has been a very special experience and you know, there is an upside and there's definitely a downside to that. The upside is that Polish people are so sensitive to artistic material. So if I do a concert in Kalisz or if I do a concert in Przemysl, there's a big chance that someone there is going to cry in the room. And I can honestly tell you that out of all the concerts I did in other countries, oh, 
except Ukraine. I didn't see people crying. So the connection to emotion between myself and the audience in Poland is really, really, really very strong. Don't you know why I'm And, and I love that, and it makes me cry at times. The disadvantage is that I do feel there is a limitation to what you can say as an artist, especially if you're dealing with religious material, for example. I know that since I've lived in Poland, two people have been prosecuted for, how do they say, offending religious sensitivities. The singer from Bohemoth and the pop singer Dota. And I think that that's completely crazy. I believe that artists need to have the freedom to say everything that their mind has and that the public has to express their freedom of choice as to what they listen to. So that's kind of the downside. I do feel limited in the statements that I can make in this country if I want to live here comfortably. Before I came to Poland, I didn't know any Polish people. I was speaking earlier about following intuition and basically taking what life gives to you. It has taken me to some very strange places. And it's only been in the past year and a half that I've really started to get close with Polish celebrities. Właśnie jadłem bardzo pyszny obiad. Bardzo drogo, pyszny obiad. Ale nie drogo. Nie drogo? Nie. Nie? Nie. Da się, da się przeżyć. Obiad nie jest drogo. Przeżyć. Nie jest drogo, jeżeli siedzieć z Kaja, bo Kaja kupił. Dzięki Kaja, to Ale było pyszne. Ale mam pieniądze, więc wiesz, nic się nie stało, naprawdę. Szkoda tylko, że jadłam, bo się odchudzam, no nic. <laughs> Ale jesteś naprawdę świetny i ja Ty miałam też. super obiad. Mam nadzieję, że zjemy go w Krakowie też. It's something that I never really expected to happen, but I'm glad that it did because I've learned so much from those people. I've learned so much about show business, entertainment, and uh, you know, what can I say? I didn't know any in America. I don't think there are any in America, but uh, I'm very happy to know the ones that I know here. Celebrities always surprise me in that they are never really what they seem through the TV. Uh, I know a lot of them, so I'll just talk about a few of the people that left the strongest impression on me. Michal Wisniewski is where I would like to start because I won't lie to you, there were times in the past that like many other people said, I hate this guy, I hate his music, I can't listen to that. And when I met him, I spent an evening with him. He took me to a party as his guest and I followed his caravan and I met his new wife. And I couldn't believe how down to earth, how kind and sensitive uh, this guy is. And I learned that the cameras have a way, a major way to manipulate the appearance of these people, you know, for media companies own agenda. So, you know, Michal Wisniewski, for example, is a very normal guy, very sensitive guy, and a uh, really nice person to spend time with. I would say that my favorite person who I met, uh, I hate to say favorites, uh, because I, I met a lot of people and I don't want to single anyone out, but um, Piotr Rogudski from the band Coma. I met him during an interview uh, last September, and I'm sure that he's the one celebrity in this country that understands me uh, for who I am. I think the rest of the people think that I'm kind of crazy, and they don't really understand where I'm going with the journalism that I do, the videos that I make, and uh, even the music. But Piotr just could kind of see me for who I really am, and I think that's because he is really who he is. He's been unmanipulated, as far as I can tell, from public image. Uh, I spent a lot of time with Cheswav. Cheswav was the first celebrity that I met, and you know he helped me out a lot. Without him, I don't think that I would be sitting here with you, because when I met Cheswav, 
I was a very narrow-minded, you know, serious artist who actually didn't want any contact with media or anything commercial. Cheswav showed up at one of my concerts. Uh, we got in touch. He ended up playing on one of my records. And from that time, he's been kind of, you know, I don't want to say like a role model, but he's been one of the people I could always call and ask for advice, ask for some guidance. And it was very interesting to watch him in his career because when I met him, he was, he was famous, but when he went to the TV and went to X Factor, you know, I found that sitting with him at a cafe in Krakow was, was kind of <laughs> uncomfortable because so many people would come to talk to him. And to be on the inside of that experience, and watch the, you know, the TV stars experience from the inside is a really fascinating, unique experience that I'm grateful to, to have had. Cultural differences, that's a funny thing because I'm one of these people that really believes that people are people everywhere you go. To the basics, we all need love, we all need passion, we all have dreams and hopes. But if I could compare the cultures, um, starting with America to Poland, one of the biggest cultural differences that I could see is that Americans really like to buy into propaganda. They're just, you know, here's a bowl of propaganda and Americans are just <laughs> you know, believing everything that they're told. I saw you guys had a soldier on your show and he was sitting here and he said, you know, American soldiers are the, the soldiers that care about the world and that, you know, really help people. And I'm thinking, what about the 500,000 plus civilians in Iraq that got killed? How did we help them? Yet this mentality that soldiers are good, America's the best country in the world, our soldiers are the best. That is the normal attitude in America. And if you speak against that in any way, you know, American people, they go crazy. Uh, they, my brother tells me, uh, you turned your back on America because you live in Europe. You're a traitor, you know, and this highly patriotic bullshit just annoys me so much. Um, and that's one of the reasons I cannot live in that country. I, I don't want to be around people who like soldiers and war and, you know, the arrogance of thinking you're the best country in the world. Whereas Poland is a much smaller country. And yeah, Polish people are patriotic, but when something's not right in the government, when the government does something stupid, Polish people are calling them out on it. You know, they're just straight. They'll just say it's straight. And, and I really, really love that about Polish people. So, you know, American people are believing in delusions and, you know, all this propaganda and bullshit that we get on the TV. Whereas Polish people, I'm sure, see something that's not right in the government and they just call it straight and say, you know what? You're a jerk, basically. Okay, I thought, I thought a lot about this question and Polish people very often complain about the hospitals and the doctors here. I have a different point of view on that. I like the public health care and sometimes it's frustrating, but generally having access to a doctor anytime you want is a very good thing. However, in one instance, it worked to my disadvantage. It was the summer of 2008. I had just published my second CD and we were touring in Poland to promote the record. And when we were about in Katowice, I noticed that I had a terrible rash on my arm and it was itching me all the time. And the rash was getting worse and worse and going to other parts of my body. And I thought, this is crazy. I don't know what's wrong with me, but I have to go to a doctor. So I went to a public doctor, the first time ever that I went to a public doctor in Poland, and she says, oh yeah, it's scabies. She was an old doctor and she prescribed me some crazy treatment that the pharmacist had to create. It was like a sulfuric oil 
and it, the smell was very strong and terrible. She said, you have to wear that oil for four days, no shower, no bath. I said, okay. And I put this oil on and I was smelling like a dead body. I was, it, the smell was awful. And we were in Jashuf, and after the concert, you know, if it's a good concert and if some fans arrive, people want to meet you afterwards. And of course, in this situation, it's the most pretty girls I ever saw in my life. And you know, they came to me and they wanted to hug me, and I had this terrible smell from the, from the medicine. And so I escaped to the toilet, and I just waited in the toilet for about 20 minutes for the girls to leave uh, so that they wouldn't smell how horrible <laughs> my body smelled. And the girls came into the toilet and were, you know, wanted to take pictures with me, and I could see in their eyes that they knew I smelled bad. Uh, so I was humiliated, and the next day I had to go to a very small radio studio in, uh, in Jashuf and do an interview again. I was smelling. And I went back to Krakow. Finally, I took a bath. It was great. And the next day, I have the rash again. You know, and I'm like, what? what is happening to me? How do, am, <laughs> you know, this is crazy. So I paid to go to a private doctor, and the private doctor said, what is not scabies? Those are bed bug bites, and probably you have them from sleeping in different hotels when you're touring. So I was diagnosed with the wrong uh, condition. I had the wrong type of treatment for the condition, and uh, you know, some beautiful girls in Jashuf believe that I smell like a pig. Pozdravam internatów virtualne Polska. Greetings, internet users from Virtualne, Poland. <laughs>